Hi, welcome to my first of hopefully many videos to help you guys survive your economics course. This one is for an intermediate microeconomics course, no calculus. Uh, we're going to look at what happens in a competitive market when we throw in an excise tax, which is just a tax per unit of the good. And so let's get started. We got a demand function right here which is Q, the quantity demanded is 100 minus 4P. The quantity supplied is just the price itself. And the tax is gonna be $5 per unit of the good. Notice my prices have scripts on them for S and for D, supply and demand. Uh, that isn't always written in every text, but it helps me to remember that when there's a tax, our consumers pay a different price than the sellers actually receive. So, what I want to do in this question, I want to calculate the quantity that our market will provide with the tax, the price people pay, the price pe sellers receive, consumer surplus, producer surplus, the revenue that the government generates with the tax, and the deadweight loss. So, let's get started. I want to start with getting some intuition. Let's do a graph real quick. We've got a supply curve that just looks like that. And we've got a demand curve. Let's see, it hits at 100 down there. It's at 25 up here. And the main idea with the tax is that consumers pay a different price than sellers receive. And so there's going to be a wedge between the willingness to pay and the willingness to sell of our consumers. There's a gap between the supply curve and the demand curve. And we want to find, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to find the quantity where uh, that gap is equal to exactly $5. And then we'll find our market outcome when there's a $5 gap between what these people pay and receive. And then we'll want to also calculate what those actual prices are the price demanders pay, the price sellers receive. And with it, we'll be able to do some calculations. We'll be able to look at, let's see, let's do consumer surplus in blue. It's going to be everything above the price they pay and below their demand curve. Our sellers, our producer surplus, we'll make in red. It's everything below the price that they receive and above the supply curve. Our government gets revenue. Uh, in our case, it's a $5 tax. And it's they earn $5 per unit sold. And so it's all that area. And then our deadweight loss is in black or gray or whatever you want to call it. And there it is. So we need a few things here we need to calculate these quantities, the normal equilibrium quantity and the tax quantity. And we need to calculate these new prices over here. Oh yeah, that one's a zero because of our supply function being nice. So where do we start? Uh, let's start with the easiest one. We'll start with our equilibrium quantity as if there were no tax. I'm gonna set my supply and my demand functions equal to each other. So for equilibrium, QD is equal to QS, 100 minus 4P. In equilibrium, the prices will be the same. So I see 5P is equal to 100, 20 is equal to P. Uh, and then we're gonna substitute that into either function to get the equilibrium quantity. I'm going to substitute into the supply function because that's easier. Q equals P, which is 20. So there we go. We know our equilibrium quantity. Now we have a trickier part, which is figuring out what is our equilibrium or what is our quantity with the tax. And for that, taxes are measured in dollars. And so instead of dealing with demand and supply functions measured in quantities, I want to deal with inverse demand and inverse supply functions, which are measured also in dollars. 
So for my inverse demand function, I'm going to take my demand function and solve for P. So let's see. We're going to get 4P is equal to 100 minus Q. Oh, I forgot my D scripts. Price is equal to 25 minus 1 fourth QD. There's my inverse demand function. And my inverse supply function, well, you, you don't really have to invert it. Whoops, I'm in red now. My inverse supply function is just equal to QS. Now, we need to put a wedge between our supply and our demand function. A lot like that one. And so we're going to shift one of these by $5. It's possible the problem is very specific. It says the tax is levied on consumers. In which case you would take $5 out of this function. And that would have the effect of taking away 5 of their dollars of willingness to pay. Uh, it's also possible that the question is specific and levies the tax on suppliers. In which case you would add $5. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're going to get the same quantity. We're going to get the same producer and consumer surplus, the same tax revenue, the same deadweight loss, everything. Uh, so since I have this one written down, let's just do that. Uh, I'm going to say my supply function with the tax is equal to the quantity supplied plus the tax is equal to the quantity supplied plus 5. And I'm going to set that equal to my demand function. And what we're going to find is that's going to give us the quantity associated right there. Not associated with it. It's going to find that quantity. And that's not a zero. That's a circle. Uh, so I'll just get rid of it because that's confusing. So let's do it. Let's find our tax quantity. We're going to set PST equal to PD. Now, like I said, you could do this by augment by changing the demand function, making it 20 minus a fourth Q equal to the supply function. Doesn't matter which one you do as long as you don't do it to both. Uh, yeah, just a quick note there. So QS plus five. I guess we don't really need the S's because we're solving, because now the quantities should be equal to each other. Equals 25 minus one fourth Q. And let's see, from there, we're going to go 20 is equal to 5 fourths Q. Q with the tax is equal to 16. All right, we've got some, we've got our first important answer. Let me clear some space real quick. So next, we need to find the prices on our supply and demand curves that fit, or that are associated with, uh, with the quantity of 16. And to do that, all we have to do is substitute it into either one, or into both, I should say. So we know that our demand curve is price equals, sorry, this is an inverse demand curve, 25 minus one fourth Q well that's 25 minus one fourth times 16 which is 25 minus 4 which is just 21 so the price our demanders are paying for these 16 units is $21 each I can substitute the 16 into the supply function and I'll get the sellers are paying $16 notice those two prices, here and here, better be separated by only the tax. The tax was $5, they should be $5 apart. If they're not, you did it wrong. And you need to go back and fix your algebra somewhere. All right, so now we've got more information. We've got everything we need to finish this problem. We know that our demanders paid 21, our sellers received 16, and we can do our calculations. Consumer surplus is one half times the base of that blue triangle, which is 16 units. And that triangle is 25 minus, one do, minus $21 high, so $4 high. 
let's see, 16, that's 464. So consumer surplus is 32. Producer surplus is half of 16 times 16. Uh, so that's 128. Tax revenue is $5 per unit times 16 units. They brought in 80 bucks. And deadweight loss is a half times, let's see, 20 minus 16 is a four quantity base, and it's $5 high is 10. And so there you have it. Uh, our tax, let's see, quick recap. We converted our demand and supply functions into inverse functions, and then we put a $5 wedge in them, or whatever the tax dollars amount is, either by subtracting it from the inverse demand curve, or by adding it to the inverse supply curve, but not both. And then you set your tax curve equal to the other curve. You can solve for your equilibrium quantity, plug that into the demand and supply functions to get the demand and supply prices, and after that, it's all the same tools that we've already used. So, I hope this video was useful. Whether or not it was, I've already wasted 10 minutes of your life. And you're not getting this time back. And I'm not making any more for this one. Anyway. Yeah. Have a good day, guys.